Hello everyone, I'm Dan Philgreen, and this is Shell Point Today for Thursday, October 17th. On today's show, Dr. Harry Sai will update us on common topics in urology. We'll also talk about math anxiety. Did you not like math class as a kid? Dick Brown knows where you're coming from, and he can help. We'll also meet Ann Wills of Teledora, who once worked at the Hershey Museum in Hershey, Pennsylvania, Chocolate Town, USA. But first, a few resident groups are inviting you to their latest events. The Computer Club meets today with special guest Mike Peterson from Computer Medics. Bring your computer questions to the Computer Club, meeting at 2.15 p.m. in the Manatee Room on the island. And if you prefer the printed word to the computer, then the Shell Point Library has got an event just for you. It's the Library Open House, happening on Saturday from noon to 4 p.m. Resident librarians will be on hand to show you around their new features. They'll have refreshments and door prizes, and hundreds of books will be on sale, many for just a dollar. All are welcome to the Library Open House, happening Saturday in the Resident Activity Center from noon to 4 p.m. Now, let's hear from Dr. Harry Sai, a urologist who has visited the Arbor Medical Center for several years. Now, honestly, no one looks forward to talking about urology, but if you face these issues, then you'll want to hear the solutions that Dr. Sai offers. He's speaking on Tuesday at 10.15 a.m. in the Social Center. Here is a preview. Thank you for joining the Health Connection segment of SPTV. I'm Mary Franklin here today with Dr. Sai, who is coming back once again to Shell Point to talk about common urology conditions and the treatment options of those. And that will take place in the Social Center on Tuesday, October 22nd at 10.15 in the morning. Dr. Sai, thanks for being here. Well, thanks for inviting me. You are one of our specialty doctors here at the Arbor, so you get to see quite a few of our residents here at Shell Point. What are the most common reasons you see our residents? I would say for women, mm -hmm. uh, probably urine, urinary tract infections mm -hmm. and urinary incontinence. Mm -hmm. And for men, probably prostate enlargement uh, and maybe blood in the urine. What are the general treatment? And is, is it always medicine or, or surgery or combination? Right. Uh, for urinary tract infections, most of the time it's medicine, obviously mm -hmm. antibiotic treatments. But the biggest problem I think we see here is just recurrence. We just seem to mm -hmm. see a lot of patients who we treat treat them, but then they keep getting these infections. A lot of them could be dietary, fluid related, but a lot of patients are in assisted living and some live in the pavilion, so I think there's a higher incidence of infections mm -hmm. in those who may be you know, in the acute care setting or subacute right. setting. And I know one of the topics, hydration, is a big one, right. and we have that in an upcoming session in the Health Connection right. to talk about that because in it, if you're not hydrated, it just spins, and UTIs is just one of those issues. Right, and people worry because they, if they have a urine, if they go too frequently to the bathroom, mm -hmm. they say, well, if I drink more, then I'm just gonna go more, so I'll just take care of the frequency, but then what they don't realize is when they get dehydrated, then they're also at risk for infections, mm -hmm. kidney stones, other things like that. And you want to, you'll give a presentation, talk about all the conditions and the and the solutions to those, but you want people to come with questions and answers. Exactly. Everybody has a different take on their problem, so mm -hmm. we've, we welcome questions, sure. And we want it to be a safe environment. Right. I know this is not an easy topic to talk about, right, right. but we all do it. Yes. So come with your questions and answers because we can learn from each other in this in this group setting. Exactly. Okay. Well, this is going to be an interesting topic on Tuesday, October 22nd. It's the common urology conditions and treatment options of such take place in the social center at 1015 a.m. And if you want to sign up, you can do so at either service desk. Dr. Sai, thanks for being here. Thanks for inviting me. I'm Mary Franklin. Have a happy and healthy day. Here's another important health-related notice. Flu season has arrived, and so you need to get inoculated with the most recent flu shots. The Medical Center is offering flu shots tomorrow from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. All you need to do is bring your insurance card and fill out a little bit of paperwork, and they'll get your flu shot. If you have Medicare, the shot is free, but keep in mind Medicare only covers a free flu shot once every 12 months. So if you got last year's flu shot in December, for example, then you need to wait until December or pay a small fee to get it now. If you have any questions about your medical records or flu shots in general, call the Medical Center at 454-2146. Now, maybe you once had aspirations of becoming a doctor, but after that first math class, you said, this is not for me. 
Many people have experienced math anxiety, whether balancing a checkbook or trying to solve for X in algebra class. It's perfectly normal, but according to Dick Brown of Parkwood, there's no reason to fear math. In fact, if you approach from a different angle, so to speak, math can actually be quite beautiful. Dick has put together a math class for those who never liked math. It starts on Thursday, October 31st at 10 a.m. in the Sable Room in the Woodlands. Terry Kolath has more. Hello, I'm Terry Kolath, and I'm here today with Dick Brown of Parkwood. He is going to teach a class in the fall session of the Academy of Lifelong Learning, and it is math for those who never liked math. <laughs> Dick, I happen to be one of those people. And when you walked into my office and said you were a math teacher and you were interested in teaching math and you were so excited about the subject of math, I thought, let's give it a try. I have never talked to someone so excited about math. How long have you been excited about math? Since I was very little. <laughs> I, al I always loved it. But I find, uh, particularly when I'm out talking to people, and they say, what'd you do? I say, I taught math. And if they don't walk away, they'll at least say, uh, oh, I hated the subject. <laughs> and this is a course for those who never liked math. And it's for those who had anxiety for some reason or other, and for those who never realized that math could be fun and interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, I think now, at our ages, we are willing to take a chance on things. We are willing to give something a little bit of time that maybe really wasn't our passion when we were younger. And what I like about you, just in the brief time I've known you, is you link math up to so many other topics. What are we going to talk about in this class? Let's look well, at some of this. Well, Terry, for example, uh, let's take this, uh, this art by Escher. Uh -huh. uh, it, you've got these uh, three little well, different colored bend. Uh, spiraling around, and uh, there are very special points in the art to where the heads come together, where the knees come together, where the feet come together. Mm -hmm. By contrast, this work, also by Escher, uh, features fish and birds and turtles, and it evokes an entirely different feeling from you, the viewer. Sure. And yet, the underlying mathematical symmetries are exactly the same, and this is the type of thing we'll talk about. We'll talk about, for example, an entirely different piece of art where you have horsemen that are uh, traveling left and traveling right, and there's similarity to the music one of Bach's fugues where you have music that's going up and almost simultaneously music that's going down in exactly the same increments. And I talked about, uh, you know, the, the symmetries in nature and so forth. Spirals are particularly interesting. Uh -huh. uh, for example, here's, here's a storm that's uh, centered over Iceland, uh -huh. uh, and it's got this lovely equiangular spiral. Well, if you ever looked at the head of a cower flower or, or uh, broccoli, <laughs> the head has the same kind of spirals. It's a very prevalent spiral in nature, and we'll talk a lot about that. Now, you, um, you're going to take us from my memory of math, which is, okay, I got the addition, the subtraction, the multiplication, the division. We got into fractions, percentage. Yeah. It got to be a little bit crazy. I understand entirely. Uh -huh. But this course will have none of that. Forget the quadratic equations. Forget the complex fractions. Forget those crazy situations where two trains leave two different stations at two different times. None of that. This, I guarantee, will be fun and interesting and very interactive. It won't be teacher lecturing. It will be teacher, student, student, student. Now, you are the person to do this because you have some interesting awards, a presidential award for excellence in math teaching. I, what, I, I did receive the award from the first President Bush. I went to Washington with my wife, along with uh, one math teacher from every state in the Union. Yeah. It was quite an experience. And then you've written textbooks on math. Now, I can't even imagine writing a textbook on math. How did you make it interesting for your students? Well, among other things, I put cartoons in the books. <laughs> this was sort of revolutionary. Ah. I have to say that there are probably many Shell Point residents whose children and grandchildren have used the textbooks I've written. Well, we are going to get another chance, and we are so looking forward to math for those who never like math. And it is beginning October 31st. Sign up at either service desk, and you'll have some time with Dick Brown, a man who does like math. With Halloween coming up, the grocery store aisles are full of candy. 
But the next time you see a bag of Hershey Kisses, realize that a lot more went into that bag than just cocoa and sugar. Milton Hershey was a philanthropist who built an entire town in Pennsylvania, including schools, roads, hospitals, and a museum. Ann Wells of Teledora worked at the Hershey Museum, and she told us about the experience. Well, I actually was born in Philadelphia, but we moved to Wilmington, Delaware when I was three years old. So that's where I grew up. And then uh, I married Tom in 1952, and we lived in upper New York for a little while. But then we came back to Wilmington, and we stayed there until 1978. The DuPont Company had purchased a small electronics company outside of Harrisburg, and we fell in love with Hershey and found a house in the woods up on the hill and, and just decided that was the place for us. So that's when we moved to Hershey, Pennsylvania. Where we happened to settle was sort of up on the hill outside of Hershey. And when the wind was right, you would have the smell of chocolate up there. But uh, after Mr. Hershey started the chocolate company, he also bought Reese's company. So at the other end of town, you smelled roasted peanuts. <laughs> so it was, you couldn't win for losing. If you wanted to go on a diet, forget it. You just had to get a chocolate fix at the Hershey drugstore every once in a while. <laughs> chocolate Avenue is the main street, and then it crosses with cocoa. And along the street are the street lights, which are Hershey Kisses. And every other one is a wrapped Hershey Kiss, silver with the tag and then the other ones in between are the brown ones. So that's, that's a fun thing about Hershey. Milton Hershey was responsible for starting this whole little area. He became an apprentice for a caramel maker outside of uh, Lancaster. But in the meantime, he became interested in the manufacture of milk chocolate. And at that time, the Swiss were the only people who were making milk chocolate. It was very a very refined, esoteric kind of thing and but he was determined and so he started out with the manufacture of milk chocolate and so he moved to Derry Township where he had been born the dairy farms were there and there's a wonderful hard-working industrious population and the chocolate company was actually founded in 1903 and he became the founder of the town he he realized as a uneducated person himself how important education was. So schools were started, there was a ch uh, churches. It was just a beautiful kind of model town. Because he and his wife did not have any children, they decided that it would be a wonderful investment to have a school for orphan boys. And so the school was started in 1909 started out in the countryside you know there were there were dairy farms around and the, and the boys lived in the farms and actually worked on the farms it was called the Hershey Industrial School originally and then gradually over a period of time it has become fairly much an academic school it's incredible the number of boys that are there and when we lived there we'd see them come back for reunions so appreciative of what they had received because 30 percent of the chocolate company went to the school the amusement park, yes, that was actually started as a small park. I remember taking our children there when we still lived in Delaware. The one time I remember when I really had to become very brave was when my son and I went to Hershey Park and he was feeling a little displaced because he was going into his junior year in high school. He really didn't know anybody. So he said, Mom, will you go on the super duper looper with me? And I hated roller coasters. I just, oh. But anyway, I steeled myself and I got on that super duper looper and closed my eyes through the whole thing. He said, Mom, you have to open your eyes. The sky's under your feet. You know? <laughs> and since then, I think they've added, I don't know how many other um, uh, rides. And then there was, a, there was a big swimming pool at one point too, and a dance place. You know, there's all kinds of things, everything you could imagine. And the other thing that we used to enjoy was at the theater. There was a beautiful theater organ there, and we'd go down and see old movies and hear somebody actually play the, play the organ. Coming from Wilmington, which was a, mainly a mecca for the DuPont Company, um, and the people there were fairly well-educated, quite well-educated, um, somebody said to us when they heard that we were moving to Hershey, well, you can always talk to the cows. 
<laughs> Three of our children had grown up and were gone, and uh, I was trying to find something to do to occupy my time. And so one of my neighbors suggested that I <clears throat> become a docent at the Hershey Museum of American Life. And um, I did that for a while. I led school groups through the, through the museum. Mr. Hershey had, because of his interest in culture and education, he had bought various collections. He had an Indian collection. He had a Pennsylvania uh, German collection. My main job there was to demonstrate the apostolic clock, which is a 11 foot clock. It depicts the betrayal of Christ. And so every hour, a quarter of the hour, I would gather up all the people in the museum and ask them to come over to the apostolic clock and I would tell them the story. And there were little wooden figures that would march out and they were the apostles. And then the high point, the dra drama, was when Judas came out and turned his back on Christ and turned out and looked at the audience. So here people are kind of agog at this, you know. That, that uh, it still lives at the museum, but it's not played as much anymore because the wear and tear was getting to be too high. But in addition to that, then Mr. Hershey had a collection of mechanical music boxes. And so I would play music boxes um, for the people. You get visitors from everywhere. Everywhere, and I had more fun trying to identify the accents, try to pick up on where what parts of the country, what parts of the world people were from. And once in a while we had a few. We had uh, Jackie Gleason came in one time, I remember that, and he was trying to be very low pri profile, and I, I was thinking, that has to be Jackie Gleason. So said, oh yes, it was. Because <laughs> it's, it's a very popular place. And of course, then Mr. Hershey built that beautiful hotel up on the hill, which is a place where people go for conventions and meetings and that sort of thing, and it's become a very, um, attractive place for, because it has spa, a spa where you can be covered with chocolate. You know? <laughs> My parents moved here actually when it was just four years old. The, the church hadn't been built yet, the crystal dining room wasn't open. So basically my children grew up here, you know, coming down to visit. And uh, my parents both ended up in the pavilion so whenever we would come, the people in the pavilion, the nurses and the staff said, oh, you're coming, you're going to bring us one of those five-pound Hershey bars. <laughs> so we'd go in with these great big Hershey bars, you know, and they'd, they'd split it up and share it amongst the people on the floor. <laughs> we came to really love the area and just feel very at home here now. Do you know of other people who lived in unique towns or cities? Let us know about it. Contact Jared Pike by phone or email, and let's shine the Shell Point TV spotlight on these unique places. For now, it's time to cover all of today's happenings from resort services. Then stay tuned for your Academy News, Menus, and Village Church Connections. Hi everybody and welcome to Thursday's edition of the Happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley, and this is Mary Franklin, and we're going to go over your activities here at Shell Point today. As usual, we're going to start out bright and early. We don't want you to have nothing to do if you're up in those early hours of the day. So we're going to set, offer you 715 class, Health Connections class, Bend, Breathe, and Balance down in the health club. At 8 o'clock, the men's golf group will be down at the Shell Point Golf Club. At 8 o'clock, we have the round robin men's doubles tennis going on at the Woodlands Tennis Court. Those kayakers will be down at the kayak storage facility at 8.30 for their weekly paddle, so you do have to have your own boat to participate, but head on down there for some good fun. At 9.15, we have shuffleboard at the shuffleboard courts at the Resident Activity Center. 9.30 is the time the current events group will be in the game room at the Woodlands. At 9.30, we also have the ladies' match play tennis going on at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. At 9.45, we have Introduction to Beginning Line Dancing in the Health Club. 10 o'clock is the time the Suzy Q heads out to Woody's for lunch. Sign up is required. Then we move into another line dancing group. This is the 1015 Basic Line Dancing Group, also in the Health Club. And we, at 11.15, we have our final line dancing for the morning. We have Advanced Line Dancing, also in the Health Club. Here's Mary for your afternoon lineup. Well, thank you, Bev. Mahjong players will want to be in the library lounge at 1.15 this afternoon. 
The Butterfly Garden Committee will be gathering at the Butterfly Garden at 1.15. And Spot Play Readers, you'll be gathering in the Osprey Room at 1.15. The Computer Club will be meeting once again for the season and their first meeting will take place at 2.15 in the Manatee Room. And Christmas is upon us, so the cantata rehearsal is happening and if you're involved in this group, you'll want to be in the choir room of the Village Church at 2.30. 2.45, Health Connections Balance and Mobility Training Level 2 will take place in the Health Club on the island. And our seamstress will be here today at 4 o'clock in the Osprey Room. Alcoholics Anonymous meeting will take place at 4.30 in the Sable Room. And we wrap it up with two events at 7 o'clock, Pinochle in the Library Lounge and Trailblazers Bible Study Group meeting in the Game Room. That's it for Thursday. Bev and I look forward to seeing you right back here tomorrow when we kick off the weekend edition of The Happenings. And Bev, we got a little bit of hockey this weekend. Yep. The library has a book sale. You can get your flu shot and even see a movie on Sunday night. It's going to be a great weekend, so tune in. Hello, I'm Terry Kolath with your Academy Classes for Thursday. At 9.45, Art History, Caravaggio, The Man, The Art, The Mind, will be presented in the Social Center at the Island and sign-up is required. At 1 o'clock, our Mahjong Basics Session 2 begins in the second floor country kitchen at the Arbor in the Woodlands. Sign-up is required. At 1 o'clock, Apple iPad, Apps, 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 continues in the Oak Room of the Woodlands. Tomorrow we have two new classes, a computer college class on Adobe Photoshop Elements with Harold Sear of Parkwood as the instructor and iPhone, iPod, and iPad digital photography with Bruce Findlay of Sundial as the instructor. Menus for Thursday. In the Crystal Room, the Crystal Platter is grilled flank steak with roasted potatoes and carrots. For dinner, the special is the Crystal Carving Board for $11.95 and the soup of the day is potato leek. In the Island Cafe for lunch on Thursday, enjoy a teriyaki chicken sandwich with pineapple and french fries for $7.25. The dinner special is Thai night for $8.25. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill on Thursday are grilled ribeye for $18.95 or fried chicken for $13.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Greetings and welcome today to Village Church Connections. Thank you for joining us. And I'm also being joined today by David Pavey. David has worked at the Village Church in a number of capacities over the last few years. Mm -hmm. But you are here today because you are representing our missions committee. That's right. And we are excited about a weekend that's coming up the end of this month, our Fall Focus Weekend. We have a very special guest coming. His name is Tom Albinson. Tom happens to be a personal friend of yours. Yes, he is. We worked together in Europe for a number of years in different parts of Europe. He was based in the Vienna, Austria area. We were in France, but he was constantly preaching ministry to refugees, and he fired up a lot of people to take a special interest in these groups of people who were in special need. His concentration for the past more than 30 years has been ministry to refugees, and he has done that around the world. Um, whether it's Africa or Australia or Syria, as we're hearing right now, he's he's been involved in ministry to refugees. He's made a made a big difference in a lot of places. Vienna was one of the points at which some of these people who were on what he calls the refugee highway would come together, and they were placed in camps there. Other countries handle these people differently. And it was personally inspiring to me. I didn't realize what was going to happen, but a certain point in my life I found myself back in England when refugees were pouring in off the continent. And um, I immersed myself in that ministry for a whole decade, inspired partly by what I'd seen Tom doing in Vienna. Yeah. This will be uh, a unique opportunity for us at the Village Church. We haven't had guests come and talk about this kind of ministry in recent time. Um, but it is so pertinent to what's going on in our world today. We hear this in the news all the time. And we don't always know how to interpret it. We don't know always how to view it or what our perspective should be. And I think Tom um, is a great gift to us mm -hmm. because he will be able to walk us through uh, what this means in our world today and how to minister to, to displaced people. And he'll be speaking both morning and evening. 
on Sunday, uh, both morning and evening, morning at 10.15 at our regular service, 6.15 in the evening. Yeah. And then I'm very excited because our academy class on Monday, October the 28th, will be in the Grand Cypress Room at 10 o'clock that morning, and he will be talking just a little bit more about the Refugee Highway mm -hmm. and what that means, yeah. uh, helping us gain an understanding about what's going on. Fantastic. So thank you for joining me, David. We are looking forward to having Tom here. I know you are, yeah. and the rest of us are as well. And we invite you to make it a priority to join us for this weekend, Sunday, October the 27th, and Monday, October the 28th, for our regular Sunday services and then our Monday morning academy class. And thank you for joining us today for Village Church Connections. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as we offer another reminder about our upcoming Shell Point Open Golf Tournament, including another visit with Mr. Ball. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Thursday, October 17th. I'm Dan Philgreen, and from all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.